Okay, we're going to start the engine. On the side of the motor, you have an on and off switch. Now this motor hasn't been run before, so first I have to make sure that my fuel is on and then I give it a little bit of throw. Give it a little bit of throttle, make sure we're on. Look at that, the first pull and it's never had a drop of oil or gas in here. I'm going to go over to the unit and I'm going to turn the valve on and get some water flowing through the suits. Now, we've got a lot of air bubbles that are trapped in the mat. You need a brush like this to get all them bubbles off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work the brush back and forth, get the whole mat entirely wet so we can remove all those bubbles. Once I get those bubbles out, we're ready to start shoveling material and see how she works. I'm going to adjust the spray bar now and rotate this whole assembly. Now you got a nice 45, so it carries a good angle for the pressure hose so it doesn't kink. I'll try to get a good flow coming up in here, washing the material back, and one line of uh, jets of water washing right against the stainless steel screen. Now we use a stainless steel screen because just a regular screen would rust out here. Plus we use all stainless steel hardware in this whole unit, except for your wing bolts, which they don't make in stainless steel. You got two adjusters here that you can adjust the uh, clamp on the spray bar, and you can also remove it, lay it in the sluice for easy packing and shipping. Let's put some water to it and let's see what she can do. It gets a little wet right here, and uh, this is the first time I've had it out here. I'm probably going to lay a little uh, thin plastic sheet off of here. So in the main, so in the meantime, I made something to do that. Sometimes you have to make shift a little bit, and what we've done here, I just got a piece of garbage bag with the string on it, and that's going to help keep my splashing done. We're going to make something a little better for this. But for right now, this is going to do the trick. Okay. Now, we've eliminated a lot of that spring, but you still have to be able to flip this up once in a while so you can clean your screen off. For right now, so I don't get wet, I'm going to lay that down there, stay dry. A couple things that you definitely need when you're using one of these high bankers. One of them is a tub that you can clean out your concentrates, but also help feed your material to it by shoveling from this into your hopper. The other one, when you're down in the hole, is a five gallon bucket. These buckets don't work good unless you got a good handle. Uh, my good friend uh, Tim. Uh, Snappy Grip has made some neat handles that you can put on your buckets and they really help you carry the material. You can put twice as much material without the wear and tear in your body by having a good handle. So with this handle, I sl slide the old one off to the side. I insert the handle inside of the grip. Take the other half, slide it on here, make sure they all line up and just squeeze it really hard. Once it snaps together, this is the best thing for carrying a lot of material in a bucket. When it's heavy, the small handles cut right into your hand. But with the new snappy grip, 
Hey, this is the hot ticket. I think we're ready to get to work now. Okay, I'm here working today with my buddy Keith, and he's going to help me do some digging. And uh, we're going to start running some material in the unit and see how she works. How's it going there, Keith? Good, how are you doing? All right, you ready to slave labor a little while? Oh, yeah. Buy some gold? Always for gold. All right. Okay, let's start shoveling. One of the neat things about this unit, you can run a lot of material. It just all depends on how hard you're willing to work. When you're finding good gold, that's great motivation. So we're going to work hard today. Now every once in a while, our classify down here will get filled with rocks. So all we do is we take the shovel, against the stainless steel, quarter inch mesh. And that works good for cleaning it off, getting it clean, and getting all the large rocks off of it. Once in a while, you have to let the material actually clear out. You don't want to overload the ripple, so sometimes a couple second breather really makes a difference. With some of these old boxes, what they had to do is they had to use a small little tiny scoop and slowly feed the material. At least with this machine, I can do lots of shovel loads, equating to moving a lot more material. The more material you move, the more gold you find. Amazing the way that sluice works, huh? Amazing. How much gold do you think you found so far? An ounce and a half. Right on. An ounce and a half of gold. Up at Nome Beach, Alaska, at the GPAA Cripple River Camp. <laughs> 